Welcome to Didactics Online. My name is Rob Kawa and this is Brandon Parker. Today we're going to show you guys the basics to cervical diagnosis and treatment with a high velocity, low amplitude thrust. Can you go ahead and lie on your back for me, Brandon? So the typical cervicals we're talking about are generally from C2 to C7. They have interesting principles that follow modified Friet's rules to where they'll rotate and side bend in the same direction as opposed to some of the other major junctions that can do just the opposite. So to start, we're going to diagnose with the translatory motion. So I'm going to be on Brandon's articular pillars, just medial from the cervical transverse process, and I'm going to push at 45 degree angles towards the opposite side. This will induce side bending in the cervical spine and let me know which segments are rotated and side bent to corresponding areas. So when I move down through Brandon's cervical spine, I notice that he's got restriction on the right side when I try to translate to the left. He'll actually push from left to right and tells me that his upper cervical complex is rotated and side bent to the left. Now it's part of the diagnosis. The other end, we're going to extend him down to the segments and we're going to check the same looking for symmetry or asymmetry. When I flex him up, I notice that the translatory motion gets a little more symmetrical. So those segments actually live in flexion. Now to treat him with a high velocity, low amplitude thrust, we're going to turn this into a direct technique and take all of the motions into the, the manner that brings them to the more restrictive barrier before we give a slight thrust. Now, to start doing this, you never really want to extend the neck too far into extension because you can block off the vertebral arteries and with a high velocity thrust you can cause damage to the cervical spine. So we're going to take out a little bit of the motion in the normal lordotic curve and we're going to start by adding a little bit of rotation in a direct manner. So I'm going to rotate Brandon to the corresponding segment that I felt was out of place and then we're going to side bend him in the, the apparent direction of ease. Now the way the cervical spine moves, when I rotated him to the right, he already is going to rotate and side bend in a direct manner. And the actual motion where I side bend him into the freedom of motion will just lock out the rest of the cervical spine. Now we said he's flexed, so I'm just going to let his head fall into extension at the segment now that I'm in position. I bring him to a good barrier, and with good localization technique, I didn't even have to thrust. Brandon already went, and he had a nice articulation there, and we put him back into place. If I needed to thrust here, I would have Brandon take a deep breath in for me, breathe all the way out, I could fine tune with a little bit more motion, and I would give a high velocity thrust. Now, the idea is generally not to have an incredible amount of thrust to where you get several segments to move. You really want about one at a time. It's better for your patient, it's more comfortable, and you can localize and fine tune your segments to provide the most efficient treatment possible. Always after every technique, you want to go ahead and recheck and make sure that they're taken care of. Now, Brandon will actually move in translatory motion symmetrically on both sides. So I'm happy with the treatment, and I'm sure he is too, because we didn't have to thrust very hard. Thank you for following us today on Didactics Online. We look forward to seeing you next time.